Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome back to episode three of season four of Tiny Tips with Tiff, where I teach you skills in the NICU. So I've done two videos already. Last week I kind of went over basic general NICU information regarding vital signs and how we categorize our patients based off of weight and size. And then the week before that, I did a video regarding the different levels of NICU. Definitely make sure to check out my other videos that I've done. I have other seasons where I discussed a whole lot of skills in NICU. So make sure to check it out in the cards above where I leave a playlist with all the episodes of Tiny Tips with Tiff series. And so in this video, we're gonna be going over information regarding medications in the NICU. If you guys don't have a copy already, make sure to get a copy of the Itty Bitty Guide to NICU, which is a guidebook that I created to help make NICU easy to understand. And it goes over some general basics regarding NICU. And in this book, I also have a page regarding medications, but I have four pages of it. So it's a lot of medicine that we use in NICU, but luckily it's only condensed to that. I know in the adult world, there's definitely more medications that you're dealing with. But in this video, I'm gonna be going over my top 10 medications that we use very often in the NICU and kind of just go over briefly, just general basic information and some tips regarding the medicine that we use. So the first thing I wanna cover very basic is antibiotics. So a lot of patients that come into the NICU are usually being treated for sepsis, which is basically infection of the blood. And so we will usually treat them with first line antibiotics. So the first top three antibiotics that we use is ampicillin, gentamicin, and vancomycin. The ampicillin, gentamicin, and vancomycin are considered broad spectrum antibiotics that basically can treat all sorts of bacteria until we finally figure out what is the cause of the infection, and then we can treat it with the specific type of antibiotic. But a lot of times um, patients will come in, we usually do a blood culture right away, and then we start them immediately on these broad spectrum antibiotics. So the ampicillin is actually a medication that we give um, that we actually run over for a very short period of time. So a lot of times you'll run it on a pump for 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and this one though is not compatible with your um, IV fluids. So a lot of times it's not compatible with TPN or lipids. So you're actually gonna have to pause your fluids for the duration of medication. Or a lot of times people put in a separate IV or if they have a PIC line, usually they want it to be a double lumen where the one lumen can run your fluids and the other lumen is only used for that medication. So it really is important to make sure to check the compatibility of the medication you're giving with the medication that is currently running if you are having a patient on IV fluid. Very important to remember that. Um, and then gentamicin is another broad spectrum antibiotic that we usually run over 30 minutes. And the great thing about gentamicin is that it actually can be compatible with other fluids. So luckily we can run it with our TPN lipids. You don't usually have to pause it and we run it over for 30 minutes. And then the vancomycin is very important too. And it is also another broad spectrum antibiotic that we use, not as frequently, but definitely we do use. Um, and it is usually typically run over one hour on the pump. So it is also compatible with other fluid medications. So it can run with your um, TPN and lipids and you can run it for the duration of one hour. So those are the three most common broad spectrum antibiotics that we use very often in the NICU. And this is to treat infection sepsis until we finally figure out what is the cause of it. And then we treat it with more specific antibiotics. So another medication that we use very often in the NICU is iron, also known as ferrous sulfate. So a lot of patients come into NICU for prematurity. And so we usually like to give them iron just to help with their oxygenation of their blood. For me, I also take iron supplements as well. Um, and so people who do have anemia take iron. And so a lot of times we give our premature patients iron as a supplementation. Um, and so iron is super common that we give very often to our premature patients. And usually the third medication that we give very often in the NICU is Darby Poetin. So it's also, termed differently too. It can be called Darby, Darby Poetin, Epo or Epo Poetin. So basically it's the same thing where it's basically an injection that we give to our patients. So you'll do it subcutaneously and we usually do it in the thighs. Um, and it's usually once a week thing where it actually helps to enhance and produce more red blood cells. And so basically we give it in conjunction with the iron. So you'll have your Epo or your Darby, whatever it's called, um, injection once a week. Um, and that's basically to help produce more red blood cells. And then the iron is helping to oxygenate 
those blood cells. So it's like a combination of both that we give and usually we give these to our premature patients. So the fourth medication that we give very often in the NICU is caffeine. And it is very similar to what we as adults take in. So I am a tea drinker and that's so that's my source of caffeine, but I know a lot of people take in coffee, energy drinks, all of those sorts. But for babies, we actually give caffeine for a very slightly different reason. So for adults, it helps to stimulate us and keeps us more active and awake. For babies, it does the same thing. It is also a stimulant, but it actually helps them with their, their respiratory. So it is a respiratory stimulant. So it's like a connection to the brain that is basically telling them that, hey, you gotta breathe. So we give these often to our premature patients, which actually helps to stimulate them to breathe. And so the fifth medication that we give often in the NICU is vitamin D. So this is also another supplement that we give and especially given also to our premature patients because a lot of them are born very small. They have very brittle um, bones or potentially can have brittle bones. And so we like to give them vitamin D as an additional supplementation. So a lot of times you'll have patients that get ordered iron and vitamin D as a conjunction of vitamins that we give to the baby. Okay, the sixth medication that we're gonna be discussing is diuretics. So very two common diuretics that we give often is Diaryl and Lasix. So these medications that we give is to help release fluid out of the body. So we have some patients with um, chronic lung issues, which basically causes overflow of blood to lungs. And so what we try to do is get rid of any excess fluid by giving them these diuretics. So this can be used for the lungs, the heart, the body, and just getting rid of any excess fluid in general. The seventh most common medication that we give in the NICU is surfactant. So surfactant is actually something that our lungs produce naturally. It is actually a coating that covers the alveoli and it helps to keep your alveoli open. And so for babies that are born premature and born too early, they don't have the time or don't have the capacity to build that surfactant to cover the alveoli. And so a lot of times what we can do is once they are born, we will intubate them by putting a tube into their mouth and we give them surfactant um, through their ET tube. And that way it helps to coat their alveoli and helps them to breathe a little bit better. So we can give many doses of this and it's something that we can give to our premature patients. So the eighth common thing that we give in the NICU is pain management medication. So I'm gonna be going over just a few that we give very often, but morphine is something that we give very often for pain management, um, as well as fentanyl. Some hospitals use it and some don't, but fentanyl is also another common medication that we give for pain management. So it's very important to assess your patient's pain. So we use the pain score on our patients and really assess your patient, because of course your patients can't tell you when they're in pain. So we use a scoring scale to determine whether the patient needs pain management medication or not. Another common medication we give also for pain, um, more for sedation purposes, is Ativan. And this is helping to really calm the patient down, especially for babies that are like intubated or have chronic pain. We like to give Ativan to help sedate them and keep them nice and calm and asleep, especially for procedure. And then also another pain management medication that we give as well is Tylenol. And usually Tylenol is a first line dose of medication for pain management that we give in the NICU before we give higher levels such as the morphine, the fentanyl. So Tylenol you'll see often prescribed to your patient as like a lower level for pain management. Of course, it's also used for temperature, fever reducing medication as well, but we also use it for pain as well. So the ninth very, very common medication we give in the NICU is methadone. So methadone is used for babies that were exposed to opioids in utero. And so a lot of times what we end up doing to counteract that opioid exposure is we give them methadone to help slowly wean them off because there are patients out there who do take drugs. And so for them to not have any, or you take it away completely, causes withdrawal. So it's kind of the same thing for babies. And so um, if the babies are not exposed to it, they actually react really badly and they start having withdrawal symptoms. So the way we treat it is actually giving methadone and we slowly wean them off of it. And lastly, another common medication we give in the NICU is dopamine. Um, we give this for blood pressure monitoring as well as for renal purposes as well. So depending on the dose that you give, it has different purposes. And if you give anywhere between two micrograms to five micrograms, it's usually only for renal perfusion. So you may see this in for kiddos in the NICU that have renal issues that we're using it to help kind of perfuse and oxygenate their kidneys a little bit more. And so if you give anywhere between five to 10, it's usually more for heart rate purposes and maintaining the heart rate. And anything above 10 is used for blood pressure monitoring. So we actually will titrate dopamine based off of the patient's needs and slowly, of course, eventually getting them off of it once their blood pressures or whatever we're giving it for is stabilized. So these are some common medications, but there is so much 
much more. Um, this video is gonna be so long if I go through all of them. So I just wanted to cover like the top 10 that I see very, very often in the NICU. But of course, if you are interested in wanting to learn more, you can find a lot of resources out online, or I do have it in the itty bitty guide to NICU where I do have a few pages that cover general basics regarding medication. And hopefully it makes it easier for you guys to understand and categorize and reasons why we give it. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Let me know down in the comments below what other videos you want to see for the series. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.